Two weeks ago, the brake pedal in my Model 3 was an essential feature. Without it, the car would have been almost useless. I mean, that's true for almost any car. If you don't have a brake pedal, you'd be driving through red lights, crashing into everyone. It'd be total chaos, but not anymore. Ever since the original Roadster came out, all Tesla vehicles have come with something called regenerative braking as a standard feature. And for the uninitiated, regen braking just basically means that your car's gonna earn a bit of energy back whenever you slow down. Now, I'm not gonna go too deep into the science of it, but at a high level, here's how it works. When your car is in motion, it has kinetic energy. Energy. And when you slow down, the kinetic energy, it gets transferred into other forms of energy. Now with a gas car, what happens is the kinetic energy gets transferred to heat energy. When you apply the brake pads on your car, your brake pads heat up and your car slows down. So that kinetic energy turns to heat energy. But with an electric car, you can actually turn that initial kinetic energy into chemical energy, as in extra energy back into your battery. And the main benefit of using regen braking has always been that you get a little extra juice back in your battery whenever you slow down, therefore extending your range, and you're not as hard on your brake pads. You don't have to change them as frequently. But now, there's an additional benefit of using regen braking. I can do all my daily driving with just one pedal. When I got my Model 3 back in July, regen braking could slow my car from normal driving speeds down to about three or four kilometers per hour. But if I ever wanted to come to a complete stop, I still had to press my brake pedal down. But now, regen braking does it all. With the recent 2019.36 software update that Tesla issued a couple weeks ago, regen braking can now take your car from normal driving speeds down to a complete stop, and then it can also apply the brakes automatically and hold your car in position until you're ready to go again. And now that I've had a couple weeks to play around with the feature, I've got to say, it is an incredible experience. I can do all my daily driving. I can drive forward. I can drive reverse. I can do a three-point turn. I can even park my car without ever touching the brake pedal. It's insane. And the other day, I got curious about how much Tesla's hold mode could handle. What were its limits? So I went down to a local road and I ran a few tests. First, I wanted to see how hold mode might react on really steep streets. Like, you know those super steep ones in San Francisco? If I was trying to park on one of those without using a brake pedal. Now uphill, I was wondering if hold mode would be able to hold onto my car or if it would let the car slide back downhill. And on the downhills, I was trying to figure out if I kept going downhill and let go of the accelerator, would hold mode and the regen braking be strong enough to actually stop the car or would the car just continue drifting down the hill? So I went to one of the steepest hills I know in Toronto. It's got a nine degree grade or 15.8% grade, which is steeper than a lot of the Tour de France climbs you see on TV. And here's what happened. All right, we're on probably one of the steepest hills in Toronto. This is a nine degree incline. Here's our marker up ahead. I'm gonna let go of the accelerator. I'm not gonna touch the brake. Let's see if the car stops or if it rolls back downhill. Let go, feet off all pedals, and the car stopped. It's just holding. That's insane. <laughs> all right, we're approaching the nine degree marker. We're going 15K an hour. I'm gonna let go right here. There's the marker out the window, and the car completely stopped. It's on hold. My foot's not on the brake. The car just stopped on the downhill. And that was impressive. I mean, the car can stop on a hill, and you don't even need the brake pedal. But then I wanted to see how strong Tesla's regen braking actually was, and what kind of stopping distances I could get without using the brake pedal. So we're gonna start driving at 60 kilometers an hour and 30 kilometers an hour and see what its stopping distance is gonna be without touching the brake. So I'm just gonna let go of the accelerator once I hit my set speeds and I'm just gonna see what the full stopping distance is. We're on hold mode so the car's gonna to come to a complete stop. Let's we'll see how long it takes. 30K an hour right now and I'm gonna take my foot off of the gas and that's not far at all. We're working our way up, we're at 50, we're at 60, and let go at 60. And we got a full stop. So this was the marker for our two regen braking tests. And the moment I hit this sign, I completely let go of the accelerator and I let the car drift. Here are the two stops, we're gonna walk over to them and see exactly how far it took the car to stop. All right, so this is the exact marker where the car stopped. It's 18 meters from where I let go of the accelerator, and this is from 30 kilometers an hour. 
I drove from 60 kilometers an hour and I let go of the accelerator right away and I didn't touch the brake. It took 66 meters or 217 feet to come to a complete stop on hold mode. Now there's no real good comparison benchmark here. Automakers don't test regen braking stopping speed and publish that data. But for a real world example, if you're at 60 kilometers an hour, your average speed on a main city road, you could probably stop within roughly the length of a hockey rink. If you're at 30 kilometers an hour and you're on a residential street, you can stop within the width of a basketball court. And most people can easily detect obstacles at these distances. So unless you're tailgating someone or you get cut off or someone slams on the brakes, you really don't need to use your brake pedals much. Not even when you're getting out of parking lot spots. So here's something crazy you can do now that hold mode is on every Tesla Model 3. I've shifted into reverse, I'm in a parking lot. I can back up in reverse, pressing the accelerator, never touching the brake. When I'm done reversing, all I have to do is I let go of the accelerator and I shift back into drive and just go, never touching the brake. I've reversed, I'm done, no feet on anything shift into drive, back on the accelerator, and I never even touch the brake. At this point, I shouldn't even be calling it a brake pedal anymore. It's just not accurate. It's more like an emergency pedal for when I have to slow down really, really fast. Otherwise, I never use it. When I wanna go, I press the accelerator. When I wanna stop, I let go of the accelerator. But there's no more road rage shimmy of going back and forth between pedals in traffic. Driving in a Tesla is now a true one pedal driving experience, unless you're using autopilot and in that case, it's a zero pedal driving experience. And this is important because it simplifies driving and it eliminates a lot of possible errors on the road. I mean, with fewer pedals, there's just fewer opportunities for you or I to do something wrong while we're driving. I know this is gonna sound dumb, but there are a lot of drivers out there that get into car crashes because they mixed up their brake and accelerator pedals. It's even more common in parking lots where you're looking backwards to turn out of your spot and all of a sudden the concept of left and right means a different thing to your head facing backwards as it does to your feet facing forwards. But with a Tesla now, you've got hold mode, which is completely automatic. You've got a simple lever right beside the steering wheel for changing directions, and you've got a massive backup camera right in front of you on the display. So in parking lots, your feet, your hands, and your head are not all over the place, toggling around with different controls, looking in every direction. And that's the best illustration I can think of for how much thought Tesla put in to making a well-designed system. Teslas have fewer buttons, they now have fewer pedals, and in some situations, they require less attention to drive than a traditional car. So when we think about hold mode and regen braking, these are just the latest features that contribute to making Teslas the safest cars on the road.